Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know why we pulled you over today? Exactly. It's because you're not subscribed. So you better fix that right now. Or we're gonna have to take you in. Um, more creative cloud apps come to M1. New features and more. So that's great. Adobe Max kicks off today. And with it, Adobe is uh, introducing new features to its Creative Cloud applications for desktop and mobile, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, creative Cloud is also extending uh, to the web and integrates several new sh uh, sharing features uh, to make design uh, collaborations easier. There you go. Uh, below are a few of the biggest highlights. But uh, the biggest changes, right? The biggest flipping changes are stuff that we are going to have to get into. One of the biggest changes is Photoshop CC and Photoshop for iPad. Uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, starting things off, Adobe is releasing a major feature. Yeah, a major feature release of uh, uh, Photoshop on desktop and iPad. Uh, Photoshop is uh, gaining camera raw support and the ability to edit smart objects on the go. Uh, on the desktop, uh, the object selection tool is being uh, improved to allow users to hover over a subject and make a selection with a single click. Okay, cool, interesting, interesting. Uh, this enhanced selection uh, method utilizes Adobe's Sensei uh, AI machine learning, okay? Uh, and should only improve over time. Okay, cool. Uh, Adobe will claims uh, selection made with the uh, selection tool, with the object selection tool, are now more accurate and preserve more detail in the edges of the selection. Okay. Photoshop for desktop also gains new ability to mask all ob uh, objects uh, in a photo uh, with a single click. Uh, from the layer menu, users can create masks for all the subjects detected on, uh, in an image. And here you see uh, something going on. I feel like it's the selection tool uh, in some sort of uh, jiffy. Uh, there you go. Photops, uh, <laughs> Photops. Photoshop's neural filter filters. Photoshop's neural filters were released last year and are receiving three new beta filters with the latest update. Landscape Mixer allows users to quickly edit scenery by changing the sea, uh, the season and or the time of day. Interesting. Edits can uh, be made using selection of presets uh, of a user's own images. Alterations are made on the fly and the results are rather amazing. Wanna well, see this little flipping video here? Oh. That's living cool, dude. <laughs> Where the fuck is Adobe Pro Max? <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. Okay, dude. You know what? Okay. You got me there. <laughs> Shouldn't have laughed at that. Uh, color transfer is a new neural filter that takes the color palette of one image and makes it so easy to apply to a different image. As Adobe puts it, make this image look like that. Flipping insane. That's cool. Harmony is the last uh, neural filter uh, being released with this newest Photoshop update and uses Adobe Sensei, 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 AI. <laughs> To match the color, tone, hue, and illumination when lum luminosity. Luminosity? When composing two images. <laughs> For example, taking photograph, taking a photograph of a model from a photo shoot, placing atop uh, a different background. Interesting. And synchronizing the look between the two images. Ah, yeah. It looks cool. Uh, the depth blur neural filter uh, is not new, but getting updated with a new machine learning technique that applies a more realistic blur, a blurred background, uh, while keeping the subject in focus. Hmm. Produce a more believ believable bokeh effect. 
Uh, this results in an image similar to one that's taken uh, using Apple's portrait mode. Don't, no lighter sensor uh, data uh, require or be used. Okay. I mean, it looks cool. It looks cool. Anyhow, uh, one of Photoshop's top feature requests is finally coming with the latest edition as well. Uh, the ability to copy vector shapes from Illustrator and paste them into Photoshop uh, while retaining their editability. Attributes, groups and layers. According to Adobe, when Photoshop can't maintain editability, um, editability sorry, uh, from Illustrator uh, because Photoshop doesn't support uh, a feature, for example, we try to maintain visual fidelity. This should be a tremendous time saver for many designers and one that I am looking forward to using myself. Uh, Adobe is also implementing share for commenting feature to make collaboration easier. Okay, these are quotes. Let's do them anyway. Quick share, uh, quick share your work for review with clients and colleagues and receive their feedback within Photoshop in the new commenting panel. Okay, that's cool if you're working for a client. Yeah, for sure. Um, on both desktop and iPad version, there you go, your collaborators will receive a link to your document where they can access it on the Creative Cloud website and leave comments, including adding pins and annotations. Uh, that information flows directly inside Photoshop so you can see and address the feedback in context. Here's how Adobe describes their main features. Notify others by private invitations. Create both prof uh, private and public links that can be shared. Control link access and what people uh, with the link can do with the file. Uh, send comments back and forth to collaborators with, without leaving Photoshop. View pins, annotation, le uh, annotations left by others, desktop and web. Uh, work across Photoshop ecosystem, desktop, mobile and web. Uh, you can read more. Uh, you can read more about all the new features coming to Photoshop for iPad and desktop in Adobe's announcement release. I mean, that is great. I love that. Um, anyways, Lightroom, you can learn what's new for Lightroom for iPhone, iPad and Mac in the previous post that I covered here. Interesting. I mean, why is it not covered here? Uh, are not a lot of people using Lightroom? What's going on? It's crazy. Should we just, should we just move on to Illustrator or do we want to do Light Lightroom? Um, let's just move on to Illustrator for now. Since it's for the iPad, I'm really interested in the iP uh, iPad. Um, and uh, otherwise, I use Lightroom a lot. Dude, the iPad Pro is finally getting more attention like after the uh, 2018 iPad Pro. Um, this shit was dead. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay, so you use Lightroom. You probably already know this shit then. Anyways, it's a short article. So let's just do, uh, uh, let's just do this. Uh, Photoshop has offered a select subject and sky replacement tools for quite some time. And now Adobe is bringing it to a powerful masking capabilities to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic to make selective adjustments to uh, Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe claims this is the biggest change to selective editing photos since the release of Lightroom 2. Okay. Early versions of Photoshop introduced tools like the dodge and burn tools, uh, as well as selection masks, layers and layer masks. Uh, which enabled photographers to make selective adjustments in the digital darkroom. Okay, Lightroom 2 released in 28, uh, 28. <laughs> 2008 <laughs> uh, intro <laughs> introduced brush, linear gradient, and re radial, radial, radial gradient tools, enabling direct selective adjustments in a non-destructive photography specific environment. The new masking uh, functionality represents the biggest change to providing control over selectively enhancing photos since the release of Lightroom 2. Interesting. Interesting. 
Lightroom's new tools are, are, are organized in a new masking panel and work similarly to Photoshop counterparts. Users can select a, a subject or sky to quickly make an adjustment. Selections can also be inverted to uh, exclude a subject or sky from being tweaked. For example, selecting the sky, inverting the selection to apply edits to just the terrain. Hmm? You can watch a demo on a new masking tool below. Interesting. One minute. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of speaks for itself, right? But it, it is cool. I don't know if they have any music in this. I don't want to get involved. But um, it is very... It it's, looks cool. There you go. It's loading. Boom. Okay, so I feel like she's going to, uh, yeah, invert it. So everything is going to change apart from the kid, right? In a few seconds. Yeah, boom. Or maybe the other way around. No? I'm not sure. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Oh, nice. That's wild. If you want to simulate being on drugs, buy this program, fam. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to move back and we're going to talk about Illustrator and then we're going to move on. Ladies and flipping gentlemen. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope everyone is happy now that we covered Lightroom. Um, Illustrator CC and Illustrator for iPad. I'm, sh I'm, I'm just really glad that they're paying way more attention to the iPad now because um, yeah, it, it's necessary. We need it. We love it. Uh, we, we, we want a more like pro level uh, workflow for the iPad. So I hope Final Cut Pro and all this shit is going to come to the iPad as well. Adobe is giving a very good example here. Um, hopefully Apple is going to follow. The biggest announcement to uh, Illustrator CC is the improvement of 3D effects which have been reworked with a new interface and introduce new features like applying texture, uh, textures to designs without the need uh, to learn 3D software. It won't replace, it, <laughs> it won't replace tr uh, true 3D models and texture, but it's a welcome improvement nonetheless. Mm. Let's watch this uh, right here. Okay, effects. Mm-hmm. Adapt. Oh, this is cool, man. This is cool. It's obviously more basic than uh, when you have more knowledge on how to do this, but it... it I mean, oh. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> uh, here is a look at the new materials panel. Uh, okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I think this is good. This is great. I like this. It makes it very easy. Maybe even I can do it now. <laughs> uh, Illustrator for iPad also gains uh, some new capabilities, starting with vectorized technology preview. Vectorize also... Uh, <laughs> Vectorize allows users to convert drawn images into We have no music. Vectorize allows users to convert drawn images into clean vector graphics. Which is a photo which is a photo of a sketch and Illustrator uh, automatically vectorize the image. Users can also fine tune uh, these results to their liking. Oh.
That's cool. Anyways, um, brushes now allow users to create, apply artistic and uh, calligraphic, calligraphic brushes, strokes, uh, brush strokes uh, to their designs. And making Illustrator for iPad that much more powerful for designers on the go and bringing it a bit closer to uh, the feature parity of Illustrator for desktop. I flippin' love this. Flip and love this. Um, I mean, Adobe is now seeing the sheer power of these chips. Yeah, yeah the sheer power. Sheer power. Um, <laughs> imagine the GPU power uh, in like an M2. Yeah, if it is going to be called an M2. Uh, if it's based on the A15. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, that would be insane for the iPad Pro. It would be absolutely insane. The, the 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 power in the A15, the power of the GPU, the, 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 the enhanced GPU, GPU power there, absolutely insane. And I can only imagine what the next M chip, uh, efficiency M chip is going to do with that raw power. Um, most log logically, it's probably going to be called an M2. You, you, you never know, right? But um, yeah, and uh, it's probably also going to be based on the A14, a F a 15 since the M1 is based on the A14. So, I don't know. But it's definitely interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, Object Blend comes to Illustrator for iPad for the first time uh, and functions like it does in Illustrator for desktop. Also new is the ability to transform objects as shapes without having to manually adjust individual anchors anchor points mm. oh baby 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 That just looks really good. Okay, like Photoshop Illustrator is also gaining a new share for community ability to simplify collaboration. Awesome. Oh, we have Premiere Pro and After Effects. Okay, we have to do Premiere Pro and After Effects. Um, we have to do it, we have to do it. Uh, and that, that will be the last, okay? Let's do it. Uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. Uh, simplify Sequence is a new Premiere Pro and as the name suggests, uh, let's users create a clean, simplified version of their current uh, sequence by removing gaps. Unused tracks, uh, users designed, uh, de uh, user designated clips, uh, effects, and more without changing the final video. Oh, that is cool, fam. That is cool. Uh, speech to text. Uh, has also been updated with a better transcription uh, of pop culture uh, <laughs> of pop culture terminology and improved uh, formatting of dates and numbers. So those using uh, this capability should see better results. Interesting. Uh, Multi-frame rendering. Exist be uh, exits beta and is now available in After Effects. Adobe claims to br uh, Adobe claims this brings four times faster performance by taking full advantage of the GPU. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we were just talking about the GPU. Other new features to After Effects include a speculative preview, um, a new technique that automatically renders compositions uh, in the background when a user system is idle. Uh, the composition profiler and pro uh, and composition profiler. Okay. As although we put it, uh, composi uh, composition profiler highlights the layers and effects in design, in designs um, that have the biggest impact on processing time and gives users the option to optimize their projects for for faster rendering as they uh, iterate. Okay. M1 Mac users will also be pleased to learn that After Effects Beta is now available 
for Apple Silicon Max. Interesting. Not much is new for InDesign this year, though it now supports uh, Apple's M1 processor natively. According to Adobe, this results in 59% uh, improvement uh, to performance versus Intel Max. Okay. I mean, yeah. Cool. Interesting. Right? It's cool.